Hello again. Um, this is Dan Garfield from should, Fresh. We should tell everybody, hey, we're going to start the talk now, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> start off nice. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, just to introduce ourselves, Luke. Uh, yeah, Luke Phillips from the New York Times. And uh, my name is Dan Garfield. I'm the co-founder, chief open source officer of CodeFresh, and now running open source at uh, Octopus Deploy as we've just been acquired. A uh, little bit about ourselves. Um, again, I'm with the New York Times, 172-year-old company that is deploying to Kubernetes today. Um, at first, I thought that was impressive coming from America, but here in Europe, that's probably not as impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, uh, the New York Times is a uh, building a digital first experience, leaning into technology to produce a comprehensive news coverage. Uh, there's many Kubernetes clusters uh, throughout our organization, but at our core platform, we uh, manage a few really large multi-tenant clusters, using Argo City at uh, the core of all of that as well. Um, we've made some contributions back to Argo City. Uh, we heavily utilize application sets, helping us scale our platform needs, um, using all sorts of the generators within, list, matrix, poll, etc. cetera. Um, and just recently, the other day, we published the 1,000th Wordle puzzle. Uh, does anyone have a 1,000th Wordle streak? Um, if not, please go play the, play the puzzle. And there's plenty of other new games out there as well. Um, and then coming uh, to introduce CodeFresh, so uh, we're basically an enterprise uh, platform for Argo. Um, we do have Argo workflows as well as Argo CD and Argo rollouts, but uh, we, we focus quite a bit on the software delivery use case. That's really our, our bread and butter. And uh, like I mentioned, we were recently acquired by Octopus Deploy, um, and they're luckily they're doubling the investment that we're doing in Argo, so that's gonna be really cool. Um, we're Argo maintainers, I'm an Argo maintainer myself, and uh, I think uh, in terms of this talk, obviously we're gonna be talking about application sets um, through the lens of uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. And uh, within CodeFresh, I think our largest application set is probably about 5,000 applications. is isn't, isn't like crazy, but... Um, it's kind of crazy. It's <laughs> each, each one of those is a cluster uh, also, and then it has application sets that are fired off underneath it, which we'll talk about a little bit. So anyway, it'll be interesting. Uh, I'm happy to be here and talk about it. Uh, this kind of started, uh, <laughs> funnily enough, on Twitter. Yeah, be careful what you tweet at. You might end up giving a talk. Um, but yeah, we just kind of were joking about app sets, but we wanted to explore, and that's kind of how we uh, got here. Um, so just a refresher for those that, you know, let's just build up the, the, the paradigm here. Within Argo CD, you have the concept of an application. And an application, you have a desired state, which is usually represented in Git. It may also be represented in Helm. If you were in the last talk in the other room, Maybe, maybe soon represented in an OCI uh, repository. And then you have your actual state that lives on a Kubernetes cluster, and Argo CD's job is to reconcile those things. And it does that with an application manifest, which is basically a policy for how you want that reconciliation to happen. Do you want uh, things to be auto-healed? Do you want them to sync automatically? Do you want to have manual syncing? So really an application is just a spec for the policy that you want for how your desired state is moved into production. Um, and then with an application set, and how many people are already using application sets? So most people, you're familiar with this. Okay, so I can go a little bit faster. So an application, no, so an application set um, is just a way of generating those applications and it's literally a Kubernetes resource. You can go and just look at it as an object after it's generated, okay. So um, obviously with application sets, we've got tons of generators. I know you guys are all experienced, so we don't necessarily have to spend too much time on it, but list generators, cluster generators um, are obviously very popular, but we have these sort of meta generators too. We have a matrix generator where you can combine multiple generators and say, I wanna make, take a list of, of resources, and then for every cluster that exists, I wanna combine those into making an application for each one. And utilizing generators, utilizing application sets, there's many benefits. Um, simplifying your uh, experience, automation, reducing manual effort, um, rather than crafting every application definition, there's some automation here. 
um, just a lot of benefits to, to kind of scale out your uh, Argo experience. Um, and so if application sets are so straightforward, all the benefits, there's nothing to fear, right? Um, so let's just dive into maybe some accidents you could have with an application set. I wanted to share an accident I actually just had recently with an application set using the pull request generator. You never really want to see in your log somewhere that you've hit the GitHub API rate limit. Um, but it is easily possible. We ourselves, in our use of application sets, we create an application set definition per tenant per application. Um, and we load those into our IDP and that gets distributed out to all of our services and teams. And so we created a simple template um, for a pull request generator. We wanted um, our ephemeral environments to be uh, managed through pull request generator through Argo. Um, and we figured, oh, um, no, no big deal, but we deployed this across some mono repo uh, services. I had like many services in one repo and those repos had hundreds of pull requests in them. And through just some manipulation of configs, we quickly were able to discover that GitHub has a, a rate limit of 15,000 requests per hour, 250 requests per second. And you can make the application set controller, it can make all of those calls. You shouldn't let it do that, but it's possible. So, And, and a lot of times people <laughs> overlook this because in Argo CD and the config map, you can set the reconciliation time for an application and that has nothing to do with reconciliation time for application sets. Um, so you can, if you set that, if you set one, it doesn't mean the other one is set and you can yeah, find yourself in trouble. Yeah, if you enable like pull request generator, now the application set controller is making calls to GitHub, not just the repo server mm -hmm. component. Um, but this is kind of your, your simple uh, pull request generator uh, config. This looks innocuous, but say if you don't, create a label strategy for all of your services. If you just kind of generically apply one label to all pull requests, you run into a problem. And anywhere you see like a requeue or queuing seconds, never touch those, never try to make Argo go faster is one of our lessons learned. Um, if you ever need to, to increase responsiveness, always switch to webhooks. Um, so you can have the application set controller respond to webhooks for pull request events um, instead. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of a little accident, but beyond accidents, you can have some success. Yeah, one of the, one of the ways that we use application sets in CodeFresh that's pretty well documented, um, we gave a talk on it at KubeCon in Amsterdam, so you can look that up. It's uh, just, if you Google like CodeFresh vCluster uh, Kubernetes, uh, KubeCon, you'll find it. But basically one of the, in our platform, um, we have uh, the ability for people to deploy Argo instances, hybrid, what we call hybrid instances, uh, we call it um, CodeFresh GitOps. They deploy it into their clusters and those are managed individually. Um, and that's probably the most popular way to do it. But we also have a hosted uh, Argo offering. So if people can come in and do a hook, just click a button and they get uh, Argo instance that they can point at their cluster and they don't have to install anything and get going. So um, for that to work, we actually use uh, Argo CD managing v clusters managing nested argo cds that are then given to each user and uh, so that's an application set where we have thousands and thousands of them and like when it, anytime somebody creates an account and hits like start hosted cluster it makes a git commit on the back end and then it fires off the application set generator that fires off the generation of the cluster and so on and so forth so there's essentially nested application sets beneath that, if that makes sense. And so we've had some accidents and we've also had some great success with application sets. Uh, how else can we explore application sets? What potential can we unravel? Um, we created a GitHub organization you can see linked here. Um, it's called the Multiverse Labs. You can follow along with some of our experiments, findings and uh, proposals up there. Um, we've dumped out various logs and configs. Um, there's a lot more experiments than what we're just going to show today. Um, so starting off with like the application set template, um, again, many of you are probably familiar with this. A standard application set has a template object. They utilize Go templating within their template object as well as uh, Sprig function libraries are available uh, next to the Go text template functions. Um, an early experiment of ours was to see if we could do some kind of app sets of apps of app sets, some kind of endless or recursive creation of uh, 
applications of application sets. Um, as the application generated by an app set must conform to standard Kubernetes rules, like a name being unique for a resource within a namespace. Um, and so creating, uh, looking at the sprig functions, we're like, oh, let's grab the random alpha function to generate a randomly unique name for every app generated by an application set. Um, this seems pretty straightforward, pretty quick test. Just now, let's just see, for those that, because there's so many application set users in here, looking at this, raise your hand if you think this would be a good idea. Okay, thanks for being brave. Raise your hand if you think it'd be a bad idea. Okay, so most people just aren't paying attention then. All right, fair <laughs> enough. So the, the lesson here is just consider your templates about uh, determinism. What might happen? Well, within a few seconds, this launch, and I went from zero apps to 200 applications. And it just kept going. I had to kill the controller uh, to stop it from endlessly generating. It turns out that the application set controller will continuously evaluate the templates. And it's always a unique template uh, with this random alpha being generated. Um, so they never uh, match every time it runs. And it, it will just spin off creating applications until you stop it to do that. Um, so, so those that picked bad idea, <laughs> you are correct. Yep. Spoiler alert, that's probably going to be the case for most of the things in this talk. <laughs> um, so, um, oh, well, no, you go ahead, sorry. Uh, yeah, so that was kind of just a, our, as we're starting our experiments, uh, we're just trying to see what some of the functions and the templating do. And so, you know, from there we end up with all sorts of applications uh, generating in unexpected ways. Uh, so, um, the, the next thing that we thought of was, okay, uh, we want to generate applications recursively, but we know we can't use random names, so we did come up with a format for that. So, if, um, basically the way that this works is you've got an application set Helm chart. So this is a Helm chart that just contains an application set, and it's essentially blank. It's just a template for an application set, right? Um, and then we can use that to generate an app that installs a Helm chart. And that Helm chart will be our application set template, which will, will, will generate an app uh, to install a Helm chart, which will then install... Um, you guys see where this is going? Okay. So um, we do need to use uh, deterministic names. And so the technique we came up for that was to use a SHA. So what we would do is we would take uh, the release name and we can actually just dump that into a SHA and then we would truncate it to a length that's reasonable because we don't want to have infinite length on a name. And this meant that we had a deterministic way of passing a name to the next generation of application sets. Um, and if you go to the next one, here's, here's how that looks uh, when it's loaded. We basically pa pass in that value SHA and then we use that in the name for the next set. So this way, the application set names are always deterministic. Um, and you can generate thousands of applications this way and they will always get the same name because you're always giving the same inputs. It's almost like Bitcoin mining in your uh, application set in a way because you're just running a bunch of hashes. Uh, but it wouldn't work very well for Bitcoin mining. But at any rate, um, so here's, here's what that looks like in a quick demo. Um, yeah, we hit this. Should go. Okay. There it goes. So yeah, we go to create an application, right? And I'm just going to dump the YAML in here, pointing at the uh, multiverse repo. And when we sync this, it's going to generate a new application. And when we sync this, you can see that one just started off with a zero. And now it's going to come in with the hashes. And if we sync that, it's going to generate another application. Now guess what's going to happen if we sync that one? Um, yeah, you figured it out. Good. So um, of course, manually, this will just go on forever. Uh, it'll just keep on generating applications. Now, um, you can actually use this technique of passing values to another generation to set limits. So you could pass a counter and you could have an if in your Helm template that would basically stop the generation of applications once you reached a desired amount um, or a desired outcome. So you can actually build some logic into these uh, in potentially in a very abusive way. Um, you know, again, I'm not saying you should do this. Uh, it's, it's, uh, but the fact that you can, it's good to know. 
Um, so uh, this, this of course, uh, if you just turn this one, this demo has manual syncing on, so we just have to click the button. So what happens if we turn auto syncing on? Um, auto sync's the best practice. Everyone should be yeah, doing it. Yeah, everybody should yeah. be using auto sync, right? So uh, we turn that on, and um, then it looks like that. So, uh, and um, you want to explain the behavior here, actually? Uh, yeah, you'll find uh, in our Git repo uh, just an example um, kind cluster that bootstraps Argo and uh, runs our experiments, and we drop this in, turn in auto sync, and off and running it went. Within a couple of hours, I had 2,000 instances of an application, one application after application set generating the next after a while. Um, the behavior uh, was kind of weird as far as it just, the application set generator just slowed down. It took like a few seconds to generate the next application and a few more seconds to a minute to generate the next one, but it, it would keep going. Um, probably if I had more power beyond just a little kind cluster, it, it would probably go a lot faster in more exciting ways. Um, again, on our uh, repo, you can see all of the dumps of the uh, Grafana logs and things like that if you want to see what's going, but we next just time, keep going. Next time we could hook up a GPU so that we could generate the hashes more efficiently, <laughs> uh, and that would allow us to run a lot more application sets. Um, alternatively, here we used uh, SHA-256, but you could use SHA-1, right? And, uh, just, and that would be faster. Um, uh, so there, there are kind of different ways to slice it. You can give more resources to uh, the application set controller. Obviously, our kind cluster, not the one, uh, not, not super beefy, but a GPU, yeah, maybe that'll be, maybe that'll be next year's talk, is uh, using GPUs to create application sets. Yeah. Well, it was at least one of the nice features of Argo with auto-syncing and also turning on pruning, where it will clean up after itself, ideally. Um, so it was neat to be able to just delete the first parent application, and that just deleted the whole chain down. Um, so luckily it didn't totally crash out your machine, but it worked out. Um, but not just breaking things in the Argo application set. Um, I'm going to show a simple example of perhaps mastery in an application set. How could you combine a variety of powerful uh, generators to, um, say, search your whole enterprise for Helm charts and deploy all of them. Um, so as an example here, um, utilizing many generators, a matrix that joins clusters with a merge uh, generator that joins together two Git generators, um, it would be easy to extend this as well to lists and pull request generators. Um, this is sort of a contrived example here, but pretend this is your organization that has an extensive Helm library of your applications and rather than defining applications for every chart or application sets for every chart itself, um, have an application set scan your entire Helm library. We'll use the Bitnami chart repo yeah, Luke, as an if, example. If I'm reading this right, is this just looking at the entire Bitnami repo and it's going to generate an application for literally every chart that it finds? Well, beyond but then one. combine that with every cluster? Right, every cluster you have, because make sure every cluster has every copy of the chart. Let's see, you know, what happens. Um, so that's, I mean, that's <laughs> 20 applications top, tops, right? I, I don't know how many, how many images there are in the Bitnami repo. I think there's 100 charts out there. Um, and what is, one cool feature to show off here of the Git generators is doing a merge on two Git generators, one that just finds a path of every chart one that finds, you know, the actual paths of charts, looking for the chart.yaml, and the application set generator will pull in that chart YAML as values you can use in your template. Um, and so this is kind of a neat uh, way to u utilize app sets. You could instead say, uh, in your enterprise, you could have, uh, say, like an argo.json file and set the skit generator to go look for argo.json files as an example and then generate the paths. Um, but yes. Putting together all of this on a little kind cluster, let's see what happens. Um, oh dear. You get a fun little low test of your Kubernetes cluster. Again, this being local, things got exciting really quickly. Um, this is kind of one of the first times I've seen an out of pods error in Kubernetes. Uh, I think you're limited to a thousand pods on a node uh, by default. Um, you shouldn't hit that, that's not a good thing. Um, but uh, this is uh, things that can happen. Um, as well as just taking every chart in Bitnami, it's all sorts of features of Kubernetes, all sorts of 
databases and a variety of things, it will make interesting things happen to your system. Um, so it's kind of a fun load test, but beyond that, it's kind of a really fun proof of concept though, how you can, in a very simple application spec, deploy every chart you can find or use that in some other ways to manage your whole enterprise. Now obviously you can put selectors on those things, right? So you can have selectors on those charts that you'd be looking for specific values and uh, you can make decisions about what would automatically de be deployed to different environments. So in that way, it's a much more useful real world <laughs> uh, application of that. Um, and of course, you can extend these as well with uh, one of the generators is a plugin generator. So you can actually run your own container and just do arbitrary, like whatever you want. Um, the, uh, the matrix of matrix, uh, anybody ever tried to do a matrix of matrix? One person, uh, it, did it work? A matrix of matrix? I think two is the limit. Though. Yeah, two is the limit. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You can do two, but you can't do more. There's a there's a hard uh, check in Argo CD that prevents you from going beyond that. We try. We wanted to, but yeah, they're they're catching on. They're putting in the safety blocks here. No, nah, for sure. Um, but again, yeah, if you check out our Git repo, there's a variety of different combinations of generators. We were trying out to generate some cool uh, experiments here, but um, some lessons learned here. Uh, for sure, always test your application sets. You know, hopefully you have different Argo environments, your dev, test, staging environments where you can run application sets. Uh, it's really easy to see how you can get into trouble with them quickly. Um, so be sure to uh, test with those as well as rely on good monitoring and, and observation of your Argo platform. So like in my earlier uh, issue of hitting GitHub rate limits, like be able to alert that you've set something off that you shouldn't have and uh, that you don't like bring down your whole Argo platform. Um, yeah, def definitely iterate on it. I mean, this, this brings up the value of doing application sets into a staging cluster first. That's obviously very important. With applications, it's very easy to preview what's going to happen when you modify that application. You can see uh, you know, how the policy would change and, and generate the diff of your manifest. And so you have a very clear picture of like, oh, this is how this is gonna change my environment. Um, with application sets though, uh, you don't have that. Um, and even if you set an application set to do manual syncing for the, the child applications, you may, accidentally delete a child application that you wanted to preview. And so you can't preview that you've deleted it. So um, definitely testing locally is good. Testing and staging is good. I think that there's a lot of room in the community to have better preview diffing tools for application sets. Uh, uh, and that that's a real problem that, um, you know, over the next year, I would love to see better solutions for. And finally, don't take anything we did and put it into production. Uh, there's or do YOLO. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have uh, about a minute left. Um, so thank you. I think uh, you can find us on Twitter uh, or X. Uh, I'm at today was awesome. So just think how the day went. And then um, also at CodeFresh, obviously you can follow us there. Yeah. And please uh, review our talk and check out our examples here. And again, thank you for attending our talk. Thanks, everybody.